After the Philadelphia Warriors won the first BAA championship, they looked a repeat with a similar roster to the year before. However, after the first season of the BAA, three teams had to fold. These teams were the Cleveland Rebels, the Detroit Falcons, and the Toronto Huskies. But the BAA brought in the Baltimore Bullets to create four teams per division. This season was also quite historic, as the first person of colour, Wataru Misaka, of the New York Knickerbockers, played in the BAA. But before I tell the story of the 1947-48 season, remember to like and subscribe to this channel. This was the first off-season in BAA history, and during it, there was the first ever BAA draft. With the first pick in the draft, the Pittsburgh Ironmen selected Clifton McNeely, one of only two players to be drafted first and never play a game in the NBA. He chose not to play professionally due to the fact that he wanted to go to high school basketball instead. Three players drafted in this class are members of the Naismith Hall of Fame, and two players that went on and drafted also became Hall of Famers. Other notable occurrences that happened during this offseason were the first two firings of coaches. Both the New York Knickerbockers and the Providence Steam Rollers both fired their coaches and hired Joe Lapschick and Albert Saw, respectively. This season was one of the closest regular seasons in the history of the league. The newly founded Baltimore Bullets joined the Western Division, along with St. Louis, Chicago, and Washington. Like in the season before, three teams per division could make the playoffs, and this became extremely close towards the end of the season. Due to the fact that three teams had to fold, the number of games played in the season was reduced to only 48, with teams once again playing six games against each other. The best players in the league were the same players, including reigning champion Joe Fuchs, as well as others such as Bob Fierick, Max Zaslowski, and Ed Sadowski. During the season, the Providence Steamrollers fired their nearly hired coach, Albert Saw, and hired Nat Hickey to replace him and hopefully lead them to a playoff spot. However, it was to no avail. Once again, there were no major injuries sustained to any players, just as happened in the inaugural season. However, unlike the first season of the BAA, the race for the playoffs was extremely close in the Western Division. At the end of the season, the St. Louis Bombers clinched the first seed in the West with 29 wins, edging out the rest of the teams who all finished with 28. In the other division, the Philadelphia Warriors finished as the first seed with 27 wins, as New York finished second and Boston finished third. Prior to the 1955-56 season, there wasn't an MVP award. However, there were two All-BAA teams. The players on the inaugural All-BAA first team were guard Max Zaslowski of the Chicago Stags, forwards Bones McKinney and Bob Fierick, both of the Washington Capitals, and Joe Fuchs of the Warriors, and centre Stan Miasek of Detroit. On the second All-BAA teams were guards John Logan of St. Louis, Ernie Calverley of Providence, Frankie Baumholtz of Cleveland, and Fred Scolari of Washington, and also the center Chick Halbert of Chicago. Onto the statistical side of things, Joe Fuchs of the Philadelphia Warriors led the league in scoring, averaging 23 points a game, followed by Bob Furyk and Ed Sadowski, but Furyk actually led the league in field goal percentage as well, but he only shot it at 40%. Ernie Calverly led the league in assists with 3.4 a game, and at this point in the league's history, they didn't record rebounds, blocks, or steals. The playoffs this season followed the same structure as the previous season with the third seeds and second seeds facing each other in the first round and the winners facing each other in the second round. Once again, the first seeds face each other in a seven game series and the winner advanced to the finals to face the winner of the second versus third seed. This season, even though they had 28 wins, like the second and third seeds, the Washington Capitals missed out on the playoffs after finishing with the first seed the year before. In the first round of the playoffs, the second seeded Bullets faced up against the second seeded Knickerbockers and beat them two games to one. 
Meanwhile, the third seed Celtics lost to the Stags in three games to advance to the semi-finals. During the semi-finals, the first seeds from each conference, St. Louis and Philadelphia, matched up against each other in a series that lasted seven games. And even though this series had been close, the final game was a blowout with the Warriors beating St. Louis 85-46 in what was the first Game 7 in league history. This win was also the last Game 7 road win the Warriors as a franchise had until 2018 when they beat the Rockets. However, the Warriors' luck wouldn't last that long as they ended up losing in 6 to the newly founded Bullets, who beat the Stags in 2 in the second round, as the first seed lost in the finals once again. During this season, the Warriors once again were led by Joe Fuchs, who averaged 24 points a game, considerably more than any other player, and top scored in 5 out of the 6 games during the finals. So this was the story of the 1947-48 BAA season, the second ever. Once again, Joe Fuchs continued his scoring dominance over the league, and led the Warriors to their second finals berth in the two years of the league's existence. As well as this, the first BAA draft added five Hall of Famers, and the Baltimore Bullets won the second BAA championship after just being formed. So what do you guys think about the second season of the BAA? What do you think about Baltimore's rise from being a new team to winning the championship? And let me know if you want me to go into depth about any other occurrences that happen in the league. Remember to like and subscribe, and come back for the next video in this series. Peace.